we talk about the Cooper pair box, right? So the Cooper pair box uh, is that we actually create a qubit uh, by using the Josephson junction, right? This is two, two number one, but this is just one single Josephson junction. And I say that usually Josephson junction, the uh, symbol is just a cross. Some people add the box across it, mean to means it is a transmod, but depends. For example, in this paper, it has a box across it. But no matter what, a Josephson junction does have a parasitic capacitor. Okay, so this might mean that Josephson junction with the parasitic capacitor. This is an extra capacitor we add to it. We will discuss this later. But anyway, because Josephson junction has a long linear inductance, that's why it allows to have this enharmonicity so that the energy from the first, second, zero, our ground state to the first excited state is different from the first excited to the second excited state. This can avoid what we call the state leak to the outer space, right? Because we want to maintain our space in the uh, C2 complex space, right? It's only C0 and 1, but not 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? So last time we tried to quantize this circuit space on the uh, this paper. So let me remind you what this circuit is about. Again, we have this, what you can call it a, a transmon or doesn't matter. It's transmon when C is very large, CS is very large, but this is a Josephson junction. It have a para, it has the Josephson, jun, uh, Josephson uh, junction capacitance because it is a superconductor insulator superconductor. So it's a capacitor, right? So it has a parasitic capacitor. Then we shunt it, makes, meaning that we make in parallel CS across it. And for this one, then we connect to a capacitor. So this is an island, okay? So this island will store some extra pairs of Cooper pairs, maybe extra or deficit or less, right? And that's this, what we call the Cooper pair box. It's coupled to a voltage source. So how do we quantize it? The first thing is that we try to go through the KCL. But before that, we had the definition, right? We just say that for each branch, right? We can have a thrust across it. So here it indicates the direction of thrust from plus to minus, plus to minus, plus to minus, I thrust C, thrust B, and thrust A. Okay, and this first is the integration of the voltage across it, just because of the definition of flux, right? Um, which is V equal to d phi dt. Now, uh, then we try to build a KVL. For KVL, we say VA, this is VA plus VB plus VC. So this is a clockwise loop, right? So this has to add to be zero. But there is an issue is about this VC. Now, usually the VG should have the plus on top minus at the bottom. That's usually we apply the gate voltage. But if we do this, then VC equal to negative VG, okay? Now, uh, after reading more, yeah, it's not clear what the paper uh, Assume it's not clear in that paper, but I feel that probably is assuming the positive is at the bottom, the negative is on top. And be, this one I will show you later why it makes sense, right? I will show you later at the end when we do the uh, come to the final form, right? So because of this, from here I'm going to change this to plus because now it means the uh, because now. It means VC equals to VG equals to the rate of change of the uh, thrust across VC, right? So this is different from the slide I gave you we did last time, right? So then this becomes negative, right? And because of this, this the last one will be positive, right? So let me go through again what we did. We start with KVL. So we have uh, thrust A 
uh, plus, I mean, uh, I mean, we have VA plus VB plus VC equals zero. And then a, VA equal to the time derivative, right? D, D, uh, X DT equal to the time derivative, right? Of first A first B, right? So we first set up this equation. Then we go to KCL, we say that IB, of course, equal to IA. And we define CJ plus CS as C summation. So what is the QA across it? It is C summation times VA, okay? So uh, VA equal to the rate of change of first A. And what is QB, right? QB, of course, is the CG, right, times the voltage across CG, right? And voltage across CG is VB, so it is time derivative of first B. Then the current through the Josephson junction is just equal to the Josephson junction first e Josephson first equation, right? Which is your IC side uh, phi A, which is the phase, but the phase is related to the thrust by this equation, right? Divided by this, if this further divided by two pi is the reduced uh, magnetic thrust quantum, right? So we use KCL, we say IA equal to the Josephson junction uh, 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 current plus the current through this capacitor, which is summation uh, phi A. But this whole thing needs to be equal to CG uh, uh, phi B dot dot, right? Because this is the uh, current through IB. So here I, I, I'm kind of uh, jumping a little bit because why, why we get this? Because IB equals to the time derivative of QB, so which is dQB dt. So I do have set further der uh, derivative of this, then I get dot dot, right? Now I have CGB, and then here I also have phi b dot dot equal to, uh, so here I also need to change it because now uh, this one is negative, right? Because now this is negative Vg. So phi b dot dot equal to negative vg dot minus phi a dot dot, right? So that's why I will just plug this in and then you will get the, this thing. Summation of phi a dot dot plus ic sine phi a, this one is phi a, equals to this whole term, which is negative cg times phi a dot dot and vg dot. Okay, so... Uh, Think about it, but the main point is about what is the mean, how it set up the VG, right? I actually sent an email to the author. I don't know if he will respond, but uh, I think this is the right direction. Maybe I'm wrong, right? But I will show you why later. And this is related to the charge because the charge here, when you say the charge is C summation times uh, the I mean, the capacitor times the voltage across it. So then we're talking about positive charge here, right? And later you'll find that this needs to be negative in order to get positive charge here. And compared to the well-known equation, uh, the offset is actually, you will see it later, you will see the difference. So we need to have positive charge is negative charge. And only when you have a negative bias here, I mean, in the equation, then will you get the positive charge. Maybe this is confusing to you, but just trust me for now and also uh, be open-minded when you see something different from what I say in the future. Maybe this is the root cause of the problem. But anyway, if I do this, then I can have all the equations the same as what people have been using. Okay. Now, then we say this is the equation of motion. This is very important. This is the equation of motion. Let me emphasize it. This is E. O M, right? Equation of motion. Uh, this is very important. We came up with an equation of motion. And why I want to do that? Because then I want to create a Lagrangian. And I can use the equation of motion to guess what the Lagrangian is. And in this case, I guess it is this. Okay? And some of you are very good at thinking that maybe we should just say that we don't need to guess because uh, this is a simple circuit. So uh, this might be the kinetic energy. This might be the potential energy, right? Why? Because this uh, is the phi dot, right? Phi dot is what? The uh, 
velocity, right? So this must be the kinetic energy, right? Half mv squared, looks like half mv squared. And then this is the potential energy. So we can kind of guess the junction stores some potential energy, right? And then the capacitor has the kinetic energy. Now, remember, this is not the kinetic energy of the kinetic inductance. We're talking about the generalized one, right? Because at the beginning, in the classical sense, right, even quantum mechanical sense, the Lagrangian equals to the kinetic energy times the potential energy, right? So, but anyway, uh, let's assume this is right. So I plug this into the Lagrange equation. The most important is to recognize this Q dot, which is what's the velocity. Now it will become phi A dot because phi A is the uh, generalized coordinate. So phi A dot is the generalized uh, velocity. And this is this agree with what we did uh, in the LC10, right? We see that phi is just the generalized uh, coordinate, okay, or location, right? So you plug in and since we did that last time already, I don't want to spend time on this. You just go through the math. The most important is recognize Q is phi A, Q dot is phi A dot. And you do partial derivative. So that's very important. When you do partial L, partial phi A dot, then you will ignore this term because this term does not have phi A dot, even it has phi A, right? And when you do partial L, partial phi Q, which is partial L, partial phi A. Now you ignore this term because this only has phi A dot. So it doesn't have phi A, right? So after you've done all this one, you plug in the Lagrange equation, you get this one. And now you compare to this guy, equation of motion. Summation phi A dot dot plus the IC something minus CG, right? Summation phi A dot dot plus IC something minus CG. They are exactly the same, right? Because, uh, Vg dot is just equal to uh, phi c dot dot. Vg equal to phi c dot. So Vg dot dot equal to Vg dot equal to phi c dot dot, right? This one is just equal to Vg dot, right? And this one you need to check earlier lecture. We showed that actually the Josephson junction energy is related to the critical current uh, by this, right? So what we have done is show that, right? That is very important. We check and verify that this is the correct Lagrangian, okay? Now we have the correct Lagrangian, then the next step, what we need to do is to create a Hamiltonian, okay? And remember we said Hamiltonian is the bridge between the classical and quantum mechanics. So we have Lagrangian, that's not enough. Now I need to create a Hamiltonian. But what is so special about Hamiltonian? Hamiltonian is that you use the momentum and the uh, locate and the and the coordinate as the uh, independence variable variable as the conjugated variable, right? So we need to find out what the momentum is. Okay. So let's first check. I know we uh, we know that as what we discussed earlier in the LC tank. We already know that it must be the Q, right? QA, and this is the momentum. But how do we find it? We find it by doing the partial derivative of the Lagrangian over the generalized velocity. That is the definition, right? That is what we learned a few lectures ago. That is how you find the uh, momentum generalized momentum which means in this case of course i know that the q dot is just equals to phi dot okay so let's go back to this equation right i did not copy it this is the lagrangian and now you say that i want to find the partial l partial phi dot partial l partial phi dot Wait, we did that already this is partial l partial phi dot right without ddt right so it is just equals to Right, uh, you just trust me, I copy it right. C summation phi A dot plus C G phi A dot plus phi C dot. Right, let's check if this is right. C summation phi A dot plus C G phi A dot plus phi C dot. C summation phi A dot plus C G plus phi A dot plus phi C dot. This is the momentum, right? 
And then how you construct the uh, Hamiltonian? Just use the equation I gave you before. It's just equal to PQ dot minus the Lagrangian. Okay, so then what do I need to do? Again, what is Q dot? Q dot is phi A dot, right? So just multiply the whole term here by phi A dot. So this is uh, easy, right? This is going to be C summation phi A dot square, right? Because I'm multiplying the whole term by phi A dot, right? And this is phi A dot square, right? Let me see. Okay. And then plus, oh no, I'm sorry. No, the, I make the mistake again. Our goal is not keep to not to our goal is not to keep the phi a dot. What is our goal? Our goal is to keep the p but, but remove the q dot. Right? We want to keep the momentum and remove the velocity. So so I again make a, a mistake like what I would what, what I did at the very beginning last time. So what I need to do now is actually get this guy um the QA, right? I need to find a way to substitute phi a dot right so this one is equals to q a minus c g phi c dot the whole thing divided by c summation plus c g right how do i get this because q a equal to this term right so i group the phi a dot so i have q a minus c g phi c dot and then factorize it divided by summation, C summation plus CG. This is phi A dot, right? This is what I need to replace. Maybe I make it really clear. This is equal to QA phi A dot minus the Lagrangian. Do you see that? Right? This is QA dot. This is QA, right? Small, I mean, this is phi A dot, which is Q dot, small Q dot. And QA dot is the... Uh, I mean, it's the momentum, right? So this one, QA times the whole thing will becomes QA times QA minus CG phi C dot divided by C summation plus CG. And then the whole thing minus the Lagrangian, okay? And what is the Lagrangian again? It's this thing, right? Pretty long, right? Uh, I have this on my cheat sheet. So let me, let me see. Let me just copy, right? You just trust me. And the whole thing is, let's look at it carefully, is C summation over two. Sorry. So somehow uh, this is, uh, to remove this nine but then uh, when i try to substitute and now i feel realize that i'm again go too early because i have five eight dot again this is the q i want to remove it right so then i need to substitute again so this take a long then it the uh, it is very bulky so again i hopefully this mistake can help you to do better i should actually first simplify this term before doing the substitution, okay? So uh, so let me just remove it, right? I did not do anything wrong, but it's just that if I do this, it's going to waste a lot of time, right? Because I need to substitute the phi a dot many times. I should really write this down. Q a phi a dot minus the Lagrangian, right? So now I can look at it. This is summation over two phi a dot square minus c g over 2 phi a dot plus phi c dot square plus e j cosine phi a and not plus should be minus how do i get this term this term again come from this Lagrangian. C summation phi a dot c g over 2 phi a plus phi c squared, right? 
c summation phi dot c g over to phi plus phi c squared e j cosine phi a so i just substitute lagrangian substitute l by this lagrangian but because it's minus so all of the term becomes negative right so i do this because i need to remove phi a dot so i want to group the phi a dot first before i do uh after subduing this before i do this substitution right just now i was too rushed i tried to substitute this first and i realized that i need to substitute substitute many more okay so let me continue to simplify uh this uh problem right so what is it going to look like so let me continue q a phi a dot now i have a a square here right so there's going to be a lot of math actually i don't like that this one will give me phi a square plus two phi a times phi c right so I will group them, group the phi a square together. This is five phi a dot square times summate. I mean, uh, c summation plus c gates divided by two. This is the square term, right? I also have the uh, c g phi a dot times phi c dot right which i can group it with this term later right and then minus c g divided by 2 phi c dot square minus e j cosine phi a okay so let me further group it to a nicer form i put the square term in the front phi a dot square summate i mean c summation plus cg divided by two right this is the second term and then i'm going to take out the phi a dot this term and this term then i will get q a minus cg divided by two phi c dot right and then this whole thing is c g divided by two uh phi c dot square minus c j cos cosine phi a is that okay let me check if i make any mistake I think I make one mistake here, right? Uh, the second term here, this term, is 2 times CG over 2 times this guy, right? Because this, this is 2 phi A dot times phi C dot when you do the square, right? So there should be a 2 here. So I will put the 2 here. And then the 2 get cancelled with the denominator, right? So I check my cheat sheet. I did something wrong. Okay? Now, that's one thing we will do is that we are going to ignore this term. Because this term is just equal to CG divided by 2 times VG, which is a constant in our, uh, before we apply the perturbation, right? We just at the bias, we bias it at a constant voltage. So at that time, this is constant, right? So we ignore it because when we ignore it, uh, because this is just a shift of the energy. We're talking about Hamiltonian, right? This is the total energy, right? So we really don't care about what is the absolute value of the energy, right? So this, we're going to ignore it. So we're going to cross it out because it's not going to have any effect on our physics. Okay, then that makes things easier. So from there, then we are going to substitute this QA eventually. Uh, phi a dot eventually which i did too early right so this becomes negative q a minus c g phi c dot divided by c summation plus c g the whole thing square times 
C summation plus CG divided by two, and you can see that they can cancel, it, uh, but leave one term, right? And then the second term will be similar, QA minus CG phi C dot divided by C summation plus CG, plus CG. And then the whole thing times QA minus CG phi C dot. Okay, and then the whole thing minus EJ cosine phi A, right? Now we can further simplify this term. Look at this carefully. This one and this one can get canceled. Then I have half in front. Now, how about this and this? Isn't that this and this are the same? So we'll get a square. And these two terms are the same, right? Do you see that? This two terms, this becomes square, right? QA minus CG phi C dot square. QA minus CG phi C dot. QA minus CG phi C dot. So they are both square, right? So I can take this out. It becomes QA minus CG phi C dot square, right? And then you will just do the, this is just negative one over two C summation plus CG for this term, right? Because this is C summation plus CG squared. So got canceled. And then you have two one over C summation CG, right? The whole thing plus one over C summation plus CG, right? It's a bad writing. C summation plus CG for the second term, right? Because the second term is this square we take out already, then you have one over, and this is just half of it, right? And then the whole thing minus EJ cosine phi A, okay? So I should have, so what do we get? We expect to get minus EJ cosine phi A at the end, and this one is just equal to one over two C summation per CG because this is half, right? So the whole thing divided by one over two C summation per CG, right? So in summary, the Hamiltonian equals to QA minus CG VG square divided by two C summation plus CG minus EJ cosine. This is not easy, right? A lot of math. But I want you to go through. Maybe Mathematica can help you, right? Uh, but you understand what it was. So we start with equation of motion, which is just the circuit equation, circuit solution. Then we guess the Lagrangian. And from Lagrangian, we construct the Hamiltonian. After a lot of math, we get this Hamiltonian. Is that okay? So with this, then what? Then we are ready to do quantization, right? Because just recall again, Q map to momentum. So Q had also map to momentum, right? Uh, phi A, not phi, I mean phi, yeah, phi A, capital, the first map to the position. Yeah. So, so, so with this, right? So with this, then we can have the quantum form, quantized second quantization, right? We do the promotion of the Q to Q hat phi to phi hat, then what do we get? It's, this, it's easy, right? Easy to write. Then we get this. All I did is just make it as the vector or operator. Now, then how about this phase? 
I also write it as the head, but we need to remember this is just equals to the phi head divided by the first quantum times two pi. Okay, and actually I would put a here because it's at the a, right? I hope you remember this one, right? Uh, I I I don't have this anymore for in this slide set, but remember that we say about we talk about the Josephson junction. It has a phase difference, right? Remember this. Let me just recall. I think this is important to always correlate. We have the Josephson junction, right? And you have the phase. Phi A, Phi B, and then Phi equal to Phi A minus Phi B, and then the currents equal to I C times Psi Phi, yeah, and then we say this Phi times the magnetic quantum thrust divided by two thrust quantum is something called the phase, right? We, we use this to define it, right? Be because the second Josephson junction, which is, uh, what is that? Uh, the talk about how the phase change, d plus dt equals to, uh, what, uh, v, right? Divided by, plus divided by two pi, right? And that's why we can say V equal to D plus DT. Yeah? So try to go back to take a look uh, again, right? How the Josephson junction works, right? But anyway, just, just to recall. So, so now I have the quantized version of this guy. That, that is uh, really nice, right? So I have quantized the Hamiltonian of this circuit. Okay. Now then we start going to different regime. Okay. So now I assume C summation is much larger than CG. Okay. Then that depends on your circuit of your depends on your uh, depends on your circuit setup okay so then the Hamiltonian will just be Q a hat minus and I actually I also want to just say QG define this is defined this is not the uh, this is not the real charge, but define uh, QG equals to CG times VG. Now, let's take a look. This is the circuit, right? What I'm just saying is a, a defined quantity, QG equals CG times VG, right? So it doesn't mean that uh, it is not the charge across CG because the charge across CG is QB right but you can see that if this is in this way i have a positive cg i'm going to induce positive charge in this island right so but just a definition okay qg so then this one becomes qa minus cgvg which by definition is qg square and because i assume the c summation is much larger this becomes two c summation because cg is small Okay, and this is another form you see in the literature uh, quite often. And now I try to uh, put in the first instead of the face, which is uh, equivalent in this case, right? Now, uh, so I will, I will continue on here because it's easier to see now. This is the charge. If I define a lumber, Cooper pair lumber, if the charge is QA, then the lumber of Cooper pairs is QA divided by 2E, right? Now, but here we actually dealing with the 
I mean, I mean, uh, we are assuming this is a positive charge. Otherwise, you will get negative number. So you need to be careful about this. But this is uh, so yeah. So this is the number, and then what do I want to say? Yes. So with this, we also can define ng equals to qg divided by two e. Okay. Now with this, what do you get? You get h hat equals to n hat minus ng square divided by 2c summation. However, because I define n as qa divided by 2e, right? So I better multiply the whole thing by 2e square. Yeah, because so that this is square, right? So 2e times n equal to qa, right? minus ej times the cosine term okay now then i would define one more quantity which is called ec so ec is the so-called so charging energy is equals to 2e square divided by 2 uh, C summation. Actually, no, it, it really depends on what paper is talking about. In this paper, actually, is defined by E square. Do you remember what is the energy when you charge your capacitor? It's Q square divided by half capacitance, right? Q squared divided by 2C or half Q squared divided by C. So this charging energy is the energy you need to put one electron across this C summation. Meaning that if I want to put electron across this C summation, I need to give this amount of energy. Okay. So because of this, then we have the H hat equals to 4ec times np n hat times g square minus ej cosine phi hat right because you look at this this is just uh 4e square divided by 2 summation right c summation so it becomes 4ec times this one so I just want you, like in some paper, they define the charging energy of a Cooper pair. So it means 2E, right? That means EC equals to 2E square divided by, the, divided by 2C summation. It's talking about how much energy you need to charge the capacitor with a pair of Cooper pair, means two electron charge. In that case, you will have the Hamiltonian equals to EC times N hat minus NG square minus EJ cosine phi hat. If they define EC equal to this, so these are two equations are exactly the same. It's just that how they define the charging energy. Right, so we are getting close, closer now. We have done, we just learned another important concept which is the charging energy of this circuit and later when you do your project on the energy participation ratio right uh, you will see this both quantity the Josephson junction energy and the charging energy okay so we have done the quantization we come up with uh, this circuit 
I mean this formula. Then what, right? So what does it mean? So in a Cooper pair box, if now, now let's look at this equation one more time, or let me just copy the equation here. This is the equation we have. We are still using the charging energy of single electron, right? For EC n hat minus ng square minus ej cosine phi hat. Right, this is the phase, right? So I kind of convert the conjugated variable from from what? From the charge versus thrust to the number versus phase. They are another pair of conjugated variable. But anyway, let's look at this first. Now you will see here what it's plotting is the energy level of uh, the J energy minus the ground state energy. Okay, so but at different NG. Now, NG is determined by what? Determined by the bias, right? Because NG equals to QG divided by 2E, so it depends on CG and VG. It depends on how I bias this circuit at different voltage, right? So I can bias this so NG can change from a different value, okay? And the best is to have, usually what they do is to have NG equal to half, which we call it the sweet spot. But you see that, then what is the energy? This is the separation, right? So then if you, uh, this one is omega one minus omega zero or the energy one minus energy zero, right? So this is the ground state. We just shift everything to ground state, we refer to the ground state, right? So this is zero, this is one, this is two. So this one is the energy, dif maybe I should just say energy difference instead of omega, right? So, oh, but it's expressed in, gigahertz right but you know h bar omega equal to the energy this is h bar omega zero one h bar omega one zero this is h bar omega two one do you see the enharmonicity remember this is this is not the uh, not the Co uh, coordinate, not the generalized coordinate. This is talking about a parameter, ng, how you bias the circuit. It's not the generalized coordinate, uh, n, which is actually the momentum. n is the momentum, right? And it's not the phase neither. It is just at the, uh, just like the parameter, right? And so you can say, you can think of that for different, uh, right? For different, for, for example, if you have this uh, phase, right? Then you have this simple harmonic oscillator, parabola, but at different NG, the shape will change. And that's why you will get different uh, separation along the NG, right? It has very good enharmonicity, and this is called charge qubit. And this is under what situation? This is when EJ is very close to EC, when EJ is very close to EC. But there's a problem. If there's a noise in my voltage source or the charge in that background charge in that island is changing, for example, due to some two level system or defect, a little bit fluctuation. This is just the effective charge of one Cooper pair, remember? So just adding one or two electrons, you change the H bar omega, right? The frequency quite a lot. It was this amount, you shrink a little bit, then your uh, energy level change a lot. So in this case, it's sensitive to the charge noise.
It is sensitive to the charge noise, but however, it has very high and harmonicity, which we want, right? Remember we, when we talked about the uh, Cooper pair at the beginning? Right? Sensitive uh, to charge noise, but uh, good and harmonicity. Right. So what can we do if you try to make the Josephine junction much larger than the charging energy? Then isn't that this term can be ignored, almost ignored, right? Then it's no longer sensitive to the charge noise. You see that even when the charge noise is changing, charge is changing, you have the same. Uh, energy separation between the ground state and the excited state. Yeah? But however, right, this is insensitive to charge noise. But however, too enharmonic, too harmonic, right? N not enough enharmonicity. And this becomes just like a LC tank. Right? And that is the, and remember what we asked ourselves, why? Why we don't just use this LC tank as the qubit? It does have a very nice qubit, except that there's no enharmonicity. Going from excited, first excited state to the second excited state, it have the same amount of energy, right? So then that's why you will take something more in between to have certain enharmonicity, but at the same time, you get quite some of the uh, charge insensitivity. Okay, so then this one, we call it a transmon qubit, which has a very large Josephson, Josephson energy compared to the charging energy. And why? Why is that? So do you remember that I said what is a transmon qubit? Transmon qubit is just a Josephson junction, right? You have parasitic capacitor, that's fine. But I shown you with a very large capacitor. If this is large, the charging energy EC, of course, is equal to E squared divided by 2E summation, right? But this one probably is small CJ, right? So this is approximately equal e squared divided by, or no, approximately just say equal to c summation plus cj. When I put a very large, not summation, sorry, cc, cs, right? cs plus cj, right? Because uh, ec is the charging, right? Let's go back to this circuit one more time. The, the ec is the charging energy due to these two capacitors, cs plus cj. Cs plus Cj is what? C summation. And that's how we define charging energy is E squared divided by 2C summation, right? So if I have a large Cs, then this is going to be small, the charging energy. If I increase this one, this is going to be small. So if this is small, then Ej divided by Ec is going to be large. Then I form a transmon qubit, which is insensitive to the noise, the charge noise. Okay, so we kind of uh, finished the circuit quantization, right? Uh, and we get this equation. When we get this equation, of course, you can diagonalize it, use the computer to solve for the Hamiltonian, and that's why people get this data, uh, this uh, plot, right? But we want to have a deeper thinking. So we want to look at another form of this Hamiltonian, right? And I did not prove this to you, but however, um, this is useful. So I have been, remember the conjugator variable? Let me just repeat. We have X conjugated with P. And then what do we have? We have thrust 
conjugated with Q, right? First conjugated with charge. And here we show you that we have a uh, phase conjugated with, uh, what do you call N, okay? Yeah, so you cannot measure position and momentum accurately at the same time due to uncertainty principle. You cannot measure phase, uh, flux, and charge accurately at the same time due to uncertainty principle. And you cannot measure the phase and the lumber, particle lumber, accurately at the same time due to uncertainty principle. Okay? So I want you to recognize that we, we, we are not going to go to math to prove it, right? But it's just similar to what we had before. N and phase becomes a new pair of conjugated variable. And because of this, I not proof, right? Different, I just give you, and you can just find from the internet easily. You have this phase, operator and the lumber operator right uh, does not commute equals to i okay and you also can prove and we don't prove right can prove maybe we can do it in homework and you can just google or ask chat gpt how to prove it but we can prove that actually e to the power plus minus i phi applied to the n will give you n plus minus one so e to the power of i phi phase right it looks like a racing and lowering operator now why why this is, uh, you can prove that but uh why this is uh useful uh, let me show you later, right? So let's continue on the Hamiltonian. Where's the Hamiltonian again? H equal to this guy, okay? So we start, write it again, H equals to 4C, I mean the 4EC, the charging energy. Remember, this is the charging energy of one electron. Some paper will use charging energy of Cooper pair, then you don't have the four. Right, so this is the very easy to memorize actually, right? This form is really easy to memorize. 4 EC N minus N G square then minus E J cosine phi, right? Now, what is cosine phi? Again, you follow the usual definition. It is equal to E to the power I phi plus e to the power negative i phi okay but just operator okay then it means what it means this guy h equals to 4 ec n hat minus ng square minus ej times half e to the power i phi hat plus e to the power negative i phi hat. I just substitute cosine phi by this term. Okay. Now, I just told you that e to the power i phi operate on n actually raise or lower the number, right? So what will be the matrix form of this one? It must be equals to its matrix forms i phi hat must be equals to uh, you raise it right so it must be equal to n n plus one right it brings it from n to n and to check it's easy just apply this whole thing to n but then office i write something wrong right so i it should be opposite let me do it again it should be n plus one and then n yeah 
just check it, right? For example, I apply this to n, n, then what happened? This one becomes one because of normal, then this becomes n plus one. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct, right? So this is the matrix form for this one. And similarly, e to the power negative i phi is the lowering, like a lowering operator. You should have this. n minus 1 on n. Okay? So because of this, I'm going to express in the n basis, the lumber basis. Okay? So if I express in the n basis, then h hat will be equals to uh, the summation of the all bases, right? Because this is the eigenvector, eigenvector, this is the eigenvector of this guy. So it is diagonal. So it is just a summation of n from zero to infinity for ec, right? Times n minus ng square n n right it basically saying that i have if you express this in the uh, matrix form right and you have the n zero one two right keep going down then you have this term here 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 right and this one is when n you lose zero plug in this is a n you one plug in right and at the same time for the whole thing because I have the ej divided by 2, right? It's ej divided by 2. And then the first one is the raising operator due to the e to the power. Ah, uh, I do it wrong again. n minus 1, n. This is the, I mean, uh, for the, let me do this the other way, sorry. So I think I should, uh, just not to confuse you, I should start with plus. I will start with plus first, raising, right? And then I will have this uh, lowering. Right, so okay, right, because this is e to the power i phi, e to the power negative i phi. Okay, now e to the power negative i phi, so then there is a lowering operator, right, and then uh, because it's go from zero to infinity, right, so actually it is the same as putting n uh, to n plus one. Right. So instead of saying that it goes from n to n minus 1, we can use the same thing as n plus 1 go to n. Because when we form the matrix and you sum from 0 to infinity, uh, they are equivalent. 